So today I get the absolute privilege and pleasure of being at Anaheim WonderCon and it's all the insanity and craziness and uh, as you can see numerous wonderful and sometimes very terrifying costumes and it's been a lot of fun today. I only have one day that I can actually visit um, but in it I've been able to walk around, check out some of the panels, check out some cool booths and the main panel that I was able to go to was actually for the film Logan and in it we had uh, Francois Adouy, the production designer and Clint Regan, the visual effects supervisor for the previs specifically and that was just really fun for me as a filmmaker to hear these guys really break down in depth kind of just their process in all of that. And uh, some of the interesting tidbits that they mentioned was, so Francois would go out to these locations and he would find certain elements that they just got excited about, whether it be a water tower or a fence or an old catwalk, and he would take pictures of these things and then Clint would take those things, repurpose them and design them in the computer, and then he could actually start arranging the set long before they actually built it. And then they would show those pieces to Jim and he would give his notes and they would go back and change different things and that process would just continue. And I think that was kind of the main takeaway that I received from this in that, you know, every director is different and their creative process is different. But for James specifically, he really wanted his production designer and these previous you know, this previous team to just tease out of his mind the images that he was starting to form up there and, and elect feelings that played into the tone that he was going for for this film. And the tone that he constantly came back to was realism. Is it realistic? Is it working in a way that it would actually work? And one of the specific pieces of that sequence that came from that mindset was actually the fence, which I actually found to be one of the more creative moments and just how the car hit it and drug it backwards and was taking out bad guys with it. And basically the previous team initially had Logan's car bursting through that fence. And James Mangold's response to that was, no, that doesn't happen in reality. That happens in the films, but not in reality. And then as he's kind of having this tirade screaming at his previous team apparently, he's like, well wait, hold on. What if he actually got caught on the fence and started dragging it backwards and they just ran with it? Um, which I think is so cool. Something else that the filmmaking film nerd me just loved to hear was, obviously in previs, you're inside a computer so you can literally do whatever you want with the camera, but if you're wanting to actually shoot that thing live action on set, that's kind of impractical because you can conceive of these, these shots where the camera swoops in and pushes through this and pulls out through that, but you can't actually accomplish that the day of. So um, what they actually did, which was just so cool to me, is they actually built in the computer these um, camera cars with the camera cranes on them and they only had them you know able to do the specific things that they could do in reality which made those shots then accomplishable on the day and it was pretty great they actually showed a lot of footage of the previs that they did um, the location scouts that they did and then something that they call post vis which basically as you can imagine they go out on location they shoot all these different scenes and in those scenes yes there's a lot of live action elements but there's also a lot of CG elements as well bullet heads CG characters CG fences whatever it might be, and for the editor to really get a sense of how this film is playing, they actually need a rough mock-up version of what those VFX will be. So that they can do that, the um, previous team comes back and does what's called, there's that, post -viz, um, and they basically just insert rough versions of those VFX, which is pretty cool. I also had the absolute pleasure to actually um, conduct a little interview with both Francois as well as Clint, and I'll be posting those um, separately. But definitely check those out, because they're really generous guys, and had a lot of very cool things to say. I also wanted to say though guys, this is kind of just a uh, warm up, tee up for something even bigger that's coming in April specifically, that being Florida's Star Wars Celebration. Yes, I am going and I am so unbelievably excited. Um, for that I will actually also have a press badge, so hopefully that will allow me to get into some really cool panels, maybe <laughs> conduct some cool interviews over there. Um, but I definitely want you guys to be interacting with me during that process. Um, start now on this specific video. Comment below, let me know which of the panels you'd like me to check out for you guys, um, which ones you'd like me to do coverage on, and you know, obviously <laughs> there's a huge wish list, wish list of people that I'd love to talk to, but if there's anyone specifically that you'd love me to try and talk to, definitely let me know. But for now guys, um, I'm Chris Hartwell, this is The Heartbeat, thank you for joining me.